If you have your Bible or iPad or whatever, turn with me to Micah chapter 2 and verse 13. And it's kind of the, the, uh, the key text or the key scripture of, of the message that we're going to share today. And we're, we've been in this series called Pursuit. Um, and we talked about our greatest pursuit in life should be the pursuit of God because it has the greatest reward. You'll never be disappointed for pursuing God, right? And we need diligence because that's who gets rewarded. And then, you know, we talked about the fact that uh, we got to maintain our pursuit. It can't just be for 21 days. We got to keep going after it. Amen. Because a lot of times we just, you know, we start serving God, going after God, we get blessed and then we quit and then we end up back in the wilderness. So we need to keep going. But today I want to talk to you about about barriers to our pursuit. You know, everybody desires and wants breakthroughs, and we've been praying for a, a, a breakthrough in our relationship with God. We're praying for breakthrough in our prayers. We, we're we praying for God to answer uh, our prayer and to meet our every need. But sometimes we, uh, we there are barriers to our breakthrough, and we don't realize that we're going after God, pursuing God, desiring God to do a great thing, and all the while, there's a barrier standing in our way. And uh, in the Old Testament, in the book of Micah, there was a prophet that was given a word for the children of Israel, and he declared their deliverance from, from Babylon captivity. And, uh, and, and uh, he said to them, he said, listen, the Lord wants to deliver you from your captivity and your control of the Babylonian people. And, uh, but first, you need to experience a breakthrough. Remember, the children of Israel ended up in Babylon because of their disobedience. And now the Lord is ready to deliver them so they can go into the promised land. And so, but he said, before you can be delivered from captivity, you have to have a breakthrough. And so uh, it, the Lord gives this encouraging and assuring word in Micah chapter 2 and verse 13. He says, the one who breaks open the way. How many of you know the Lord breaks open the way and will go before them? They will break through the gate and go out. Their king will pass through before them, the Lord at their head. Come on, how many of you know the Lord's always the head of the pack? Amen. And he says, listen, I'm going to deliver you from captivity and I'm going to be right in the front of you and I'm going to burst open the gate. So in other words, the prophetic word was the Lord is going to give you a breakthrough. Amen. And the Lord is going to remove the barriers, the gates, symbolically speaking of the things holding them back from their breakthrough. The Lord says, I'm going to take it out of the way. Now, as we make application of that, I believe the Lord is wanting us to know that he wants to remove our barriers, the things that are holding us back from pursuing God or getting our breakthrough. The Lord wants to take those barriers out of the way. Amen. And so then the question is, what are those barriers? What are those things that are standing and holding us back? You know, we could be putting all this, I mean, we could be starving ourselves trying to get closer to God or, or get some breakthrough, and all the while there's this thing standing in the way. Well, there's no way for me to exhaust the list of barriers, but I just want to talk about four here this morning that I think could be, uh, could be a barrier that you and I are dealing with on a daily basis. And the first one is this. The first barrier is the barrier of unconfessed sin. Now, whether we realize it or not, sin blocks our pursuit of God. And, and it, you know, there's a scripture in Romans chapter, uh, I think it's Romans 6.23, it says the wages of sin is death. Is that right? Or it's in the, it's in the Bible. I can't, I'm having a brain freeze right now. But I know it's in there. But the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, right? And it still is. And so, you know, whether we realize it or not, sin can be blocking our way spiritually. And so it's not just sin, but it's unconfessed sin. Because the reality is we're all going to fall short. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to not get it right, right? Because we're not perfect. Am I right, saints? If you, if you agree you're not perfect, say amen. And if somebody next to you didn't say, would you pray for them right now? And so listen, unconfessed sin blocks our prayers and keeps us from getting a breakthrough. In Isaiah 59.1, Behold, the, the Lord's hand is not so short that it cannot save, nor his ear so dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. Now, ever since the Garden of Eden, when Adam sinned in the garden, there's been a problem in our relationship with God. Sin has strained our relationship with God. And so when we got, we get saved, we, all our sins are forgiven, we get a fresh start. But you know, the reality is, is that we're going to sin again. The Bible says, if you say you have not sinned, you're a liar. And there's your sin right there. You're a liar. Amen. But he says, so listen, you're going to sin, but it's not sin. 
It's unconfessed sin. And it's, Isaiah tells us unconfessed sin creates a barrier that blocks our relationship with God. And it also hinders our prayers and it keeps us from getting a breakthrough. And so King David experienced this, this very principle in Isaiah, not Isaiah, but Psalm 32, after David had sinned with Mariah, or with Bathsheba, and then he murdered Uriah, and he, he was the king, remember? Chosen of God to lead the people of God. He was God's man, and he sinned. But in Psalm 32, 3, he said, When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away. I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy upon me. My strength evaporated like water in summer heat. And finally, I confessed all my sins to you, and I stopped trying to hide my guilt. And I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Now, something supernatural happens when we open up and take full responsibility for our sin. The problem is a lot of times we don't want to take responsibility. We say, yeah, I cheated, but oh, it's just a little cheat. I lied, but it's just a little lie. I mean, listen, I'm not perfect. The Lord knows my heart. Yes, he does. He knows it all too well. Listen, breakthroughs happen when we're willing to confess, repent, and walk away from sin. David learned that, that unconfessed sin creates a barrier, but confession and repentance removes the barrier. So we can be going after God and we could be fasting ourselves skinny. But if we're not willing to confess and repent of sin in our life, we could just be fasting ourselves skinny for nothing. Come on, are y'all hearing me out here? David said in verse 5, I finally confess my sin to you and I stopped trying to hide my guilt. And I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord. And you forgave me and all my guilt is gone. There's the breakthrough right there. See, David experienced a breakthrough as soon as he confessed and repented of his sin. And Acts chapter 3 and verse 19 says, Repent, return, so that your sins may be wiped away. And so it's a times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Amen? And so, you know, the prodigal son is a great example of this. Remember, he, he, wanted, he demanded his inheritance, ended up in the pig's pen. But one day, whenever he woke up in the pig's pen, he said, wait a minute, what am I doing here? And the Bible says in Luke 15, 17, when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. That's what sin will do. Spiritually, you'll starve to death. And I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and earth. The prodigal son, he didn't just say, I, I made a mistake, father. He said, no, I've sinned. I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. And he confessed it. So he confessed and he repented. He didn't just stay where he was. He repented and he went home. Amen? And so we know the rest of the story is that he, he, was, he was restored. And so unconfessed sin creates a barrier, but confession and repentance removes the barrier. And listen, what is confession? It's agreeing and admitting to God wrong behavior. You see, and it starts right there. You know, it's like we're soft on sin, especially... We're, no, let me rephrase that. We're soft on our sin and hard on other people's sin. Right? When we sin, oh, it's just a little, just a little trip, just a little trip. But when others have a little... Oh, man, that heathen, that, hey, he's full of the devil. Come on, y'all help me preach this morning. Is that right? But listen, we should reverse that. And we should be hard on sin in our life and soft on sin on other people's lives. Come on, that's good right there, amen? Say amen or oh me or oh my, something like that. So confession is agreeing and admitting to God that my behavior is wrong. But repentance is changing our mind and attitude and begin walking away from that behavior. So you see, you can confess your sin. Lord, I'm sorry I lied. And then go right back to lying. Well, no, that, that's not going to change your... That's not going to open up heaven for you. You got to quit lying. Amen. Come on, are y'all with me out there? Yeah. And so you don't only need confession. 
You need repentance. You got to change. You got to be willing to get out of the pig spin and go back to the Father's house. Amen? And then that's where the breakthrough comes. And listen, some of you here today, you might be wanting a breakthrough with God, but unconfessed sin is blocking you. It's a barrier. And you see, the Father is just waiting for you to just confess, like own up and say, man, this ain't right. You see, now listen, we don't need anybody else to tell us what's wrong in our life. Remember, we got the Holy Spirit to help us. The job of the Holy Spirit is to tap us on the door of our heart and say, wrong, wrong behavior, wrong attitude. Turn it around, get back on track. But all he's doing is waiting for us to to just respond. And then if we'll respond and say, oh God, I know that's not right. Lord, would you forgive me? God, I am, I am turning away from that. Then the barrier is removed. Are y'all with me? I've seen it happen over and over again. Somebody comes up to the altar and, and you're praying for them and you're praying so hard, your veins are popping out of your neck and you know, you're spitting on them and you're just trying to get God to touch them and Lord, touch them. And they're like a wooden statue up here. God, help them. And I've seen it over and over again. And you say, is the Lord speaking to you? Is the Lord showing you something? Or, yes. What's the Lord showing you? I need to forgive my brother who did. Da, da, da. Well, go ahead right now. Forgive him. Ask, ask the Lord to forgive you and forgive them. And, and they'll just open up their heart. And they'll just deal with the sin in their life. And man, it's like the Lord just puts a whole bucket of water on them. And boom, the oil just comes on them. And they cry. And, and they feel the presence of God. And they leave here the barrier going. And the refreshing of the Lord on them. Amen? And so we got we to gotta just... Uh, you know, we got to realize that sin, unconfessed sin, will be a barrier. Number two, the second barrier that hinders our breakthrough is the barrier of doubt. Now, doubt means to waver in opinions and, and to switch positions spiritually between believing God and not believing God. And, and doubters believe God one minute, then God, doubt God the next. How many of you have been there? I, I've been there. How many else has been there? Please, some of you raise up your hands so I don't feel like the only heathen in here, right? But listen, you know, doubters believe God will deliver them one minute and then don't believe God will deliver them the next. They believe God will provide for them one day and then they don't believe God will provide for them the next day. You see, and doubt becomes a barrier to receiving and experiencing spiritual breakthroughs in your life. If you look over in Hebrews chapter 4, it says, you know, that because the people didn't believe God's word, They never entered into the promised land. They never entered into the inheritance. But doubt becomes a barrier from receiving a spiritual breakthrough. James chapter 1 says, But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without any... For the one who... It's like the surf of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being double-minded and unstable in all his ways. So we can deduct from this passage of Scripture, and we can see that doubt creates a barrier to answered prayer. And so you remember Peter had a chance to walk on water. And you know, sometimes I've been hard on Peter and said, yeah, he's saint. But at least he walked on water. I haven't done that yet. I mean, I come close, you know. But Peter walked on water until the stronghold of doubt got a hold of him. And the Bible says in Matthew 14, 28, Peter said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, came towards Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand, took hold of him and said to him, You of little fifth, why did you? When they got in the boat, the wind stopped. So now you notice faith caused Peter to walk in water, but doubt caused him to sink. And see, Peter learned that just as doubt creates a barrier keeping us from breakthrough, faith removes the barrier, amen, and allows you to experience the breakthrough. Faith increases your chance for breakthrough. 
In, in Mark chapter 11 and 22, Jesus said, Have faith in God, and surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast in the sea, and does not in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen, it will be granted. Wow. See, doubt is not our friend. Although doubt builds a barrier to breakthroughs, faith breaks those barriers. Doubt erects barriers, faith releases barriers. Jesus said, because of your faith, it will happen. Because of your faith. What is faith? It's trusting God. It's relying on God. It's putting your confidence in God. It's believing God. Amen? Amen. Have any of you heard of um, George Mueller? George Mueller was an 18th century missionary, and, and he took care of thousands of orphans. And, and he didn't have no organization in America, church in America, supporting him. And he fed thousands of orphans for years. Just believing God, having faith in God. And, and sometimes he would go days with no food for the children and he would gather the children together and they would pray and they would seek God and they would ask God for provision. And man, out of nowhere, the miracles were unbelievable. Miracle after miracle. People, God would just lay it on their heart. They would show up at the doorstep, knock on the door and hand them an envelope with money and God just provided supernaturally. And, and, and uh, George Mueller began to be known as the father of the orphans and the father of faith, like Abraham, because he was such a man of faith. And, and as his reputation began to grow, people wanted to know, how is it that you can have such faith? I mean, you have no earthly support, but yet you're feeding all these children. How do you do it? And so George Mueller sat down and he wrote a recipe. He said, this is what I do. Read the Bible and meditate on it. God becomes known to us through prayer and meditation upon his word. How many of you know faith comes by hearing? And then he said, seek to maintain an upright heart and a good conscience before God. We talked about that in the last point. But then number three, he said, if we desire a faith to be strengthened, we should not shrink back from opportunities where our faith may be tried. And therefore, through trial, be strengthened. See, George Mueller didn't, wasn't born with such great faith. Every time he had the opportunity and he believed God, he relied on God, he trusted God, it strengthened his faith. Amen? And then finally he said, and let God work for you when the hour of trial comes and be careful not to work a deliverance of your own. So God wants to grow our faith. And I know that there's some of you here today that you have some mountains in your life. And I just want to encourage you. Say to that mountain, be thou removed. And when everything in the inside of you is saying, I don't know if it's going to happen, say to that mountain, be thou removed. In the name of Jesus. You know what I found is sometimes my head knows God will provide, but my heart says, I don't know about that. You ever been there? My head says God can do the impossible. My heart says, well, I don't know if he can do that much impossibility. And so there's a problem with my head and my heart. Sometimes what I believe doesn't connect with my heart. And so sometimes I just have to just say it. I believe that God is going to provide. I believe that God is going to be. And I just have to, in my mind, make a picture of that mountain and say, be moved in the name of Jesus. Get out of my way in the name of Jesus. I believe that mountain is moving in the name of Jesus. And then all of a sudden, something that was in my head begins to fall in my heart. And all of a sudden, bless the Lord, I think I believe this. Amen. Come on, are y'all with me out there? Are y'all with me out there? Come on, do you have a mountain in your life? Start speaking to it and say, be thou removed in the name of Jesus. Amen. The third barrier to hindering our breakthroughs is spiritual opposition. Now, I know we know this, but sometimes the barrier that's blocking our breakthrough is not our in-laws. It's, it's, it's not a natural barrier, but it's a spiritual one, Right? And we know this, but sometimes we forget about that because we can't see it. I mean, you know, he don't show up at our door and say, I'm the devil. I showed up today. He don't he don't announce himself. But the Bible makes it clear that every day that you and I will live, we will be in a spiritual battle. The devil doesn't like us. He doesn't want us to succeed. Amen. And so Peter instructs us concerning spiritual opposition in 1 Peter 5, 8, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. 
He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He will come down your street. Stand firm against him. Be strong in your faith. And remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering as you. And so Paul encourages us to stay awake, stay alert, watch out. Keep an eye out. And he reminds us that much of our suffering we face in life is a result of spiritual battles we face. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the reason it does is because we got an adversary out there that comes against the church every day. And if you're a Christian, he will come against you. If you're not a Christian, he's going to help you go the other way. But if you're a Christian, he will get in your face and try to discourage you and try to get you to give up. Amen. And he says, by the way, there are Christians and brothers and sisters all over the world that are suffering because of this spiritual opposition. So he's saying, you're not alone in this. And I believe there probably is somebody in here today that you're, you're, you're struggling in your breakthrough because you're experiencing spiritual opposition. Because the enemy's standing against you. It's a barrier. And it's keeping you from getting where you want to go. Or you're experiencing things in your life that, that is spiritually related. And so listen, I don't think we need to be looking for demons under, under, under rock and in, under every bush. But at the same time, we need to be aware that there is an adversary out there. And there's always demonic opposition trying to keep the spiritual blessings from flowing in your life. In 1 Corinthians 69, he says, A wide door for effective work is open to me, and there are many adversaries. So we need to remember that we have an adversary. And so Paul says, stand firm against him and strong in the faith. And so the lesson is we need to learn how to do spiritual warfare to be able to maintain our spiritual breakthroughs even when we got one. Amen? We need to learn how to do spiritual warfare. God has given us spiritual authority to fight our spiritual battles. Amen? In Luke chapter 10 and verse 19, he says, I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and, 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 and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them, and nothing will injure you. And so listen, God has given us authority to do this warfare. And so by faith, we need to pray and do spiritual warfare, resisting spiritual opposition against us. Because the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God. And so how do you do warfare? How do you use the spiritual weapons of warfare? And I don't know, I'm not like this, you know, like this expert on spiritual warfare. But I believe Jesus gives us the answer in Matthew 16, 19. And he said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The Good News Translation says it like this. What you prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven. And what you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Amen. Now, I don't know how to do it exactly. But in my mind, the way that I think about it is the Lord says, whatever you bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, whatever you forbid on earth is forbidden in heaven. So I like to just stand and say, In the name of Jesus, it's not my name, it's in his name. It's not my authority, it's his authority. The enemy can can beat me up, but he can't beat who's in me up, amen? And so in the name of Jesus, in the authority of Jesus, I say in Jesus' name, I declare all oppression is broken off my life. All spiritual opposition is broken off of me. I declare over my family, all spiritual opposition is broken and all demonic activity is canceled in the name of Jesus. And I declare over this church that every plan and tactic of the enemy I forbid it from operating. I prohibit it from working over this place in the name of Jesus. And then I loose it. I loose the Spirit of God. I loose the... Lord, I release your angels. I release your presence. I release your anointing. And I know your light, Lord, drives out all darkness. And I declare where your presence and anointing is, the devil can't stay. And I declare your grace over me, over my family, and over my church right now in the name of Jesus, in the authority of the name of Jesus. I declare it done right now. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know exactly how to do it, but that's how I do it. And I believe that whenever I bind him up, it's bound in heaven. Amen. Amen. And so I believe if we want to make headway, we got to learn how to do spiritual warfare. Because warfare can break the spiritual barriers keeping us through. So listen. If the devil wants to put a cloak of discouragement on you, 
do warfare. If the devil wants to put a cloak of depression on you, do warfare. Amen? If the enemy wants to wrap you up with the spirit of fear, do warfare. It's a war. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but it's the power of God, the love of God. Are you all with me? So listen, I think sometimes he's so subtly just, we wake up one morning and there it is. It's staring us in the face. And we just say, oh, and then we just grab a hold of it like it's ours. And we need to rise up in the name and the authority of Jesus and say, God hadn't given me this discouragement. God hadn't given me this, uh, this fear. And I'm not receiving it. I'm not walking in it. And I'm not living in it in the mighty name of Jesus. It's not my name. It's in his name. It's not your name. It's in the mighty and strong name of Jesus. I break it off my life right now. Amen. And the final barrier, the final barrier is an unyielded and a self-centered will. You know, some people Never get a breakthrough because they never ask God for it. And that's what James 4.2 says. You do not have because you do not ask. But some people never get a breakthrough because they ask with an unyielded heart and a self-centered will. Their heart's not right in it. And that's what James says. And he says, you do not have because you don't ask. But the next verse, he says, you ask and you don't receive. And this is why. Because you ask with the wrong motives so that you can spend it on your own pleasures. See, the reason we never get a breakthrough sometimes is because we're too busy doing our own thing. We're wanting our agenda and we're, we're, we're looking at God like he's a Santa Claus. And this is my list, God. And this is what I want. But unless it lines up with the will of God, we shouldn't want it. Amen? James says, listen, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motive. And so our, really, we need a yielded heart and a will to God. And our aim should not be, our motive in seeking breakthrough should not be to give us pleasure, but to give God pleasure. Right? And so listen, above everything, above every breakthrough, we should say, God, I want a close relationship with you. I know that's the will of God right there. Amen? But our, our aim and our motive should not be our own selfish desires and our self-centered will, but we should desire the will of God. And that's why Jesus said, you should pray this way in Matthew 6.10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, God has already established a plan for my life in heaven. And he wants me to live that plan out here on this earth. And my, di my desire should not be to create my own plan and do my own plan. My heart and motive should be to do the plan that God has for me in heaven. And listen, if all your neighbors like it or don't like it, it's all right. Because as long as God likes it, it's going to be okay. Amen. It's just going to be all right. Amen. Just, just cool your jets because it's going to be all right. Amen. So listen, the prayer the Lord always answers is the prayer prayed in surrender and submitted to his will. And Jesus is our perfect example of this. In the greatest trial of his life, whenever he was in the garden and he was facing the cross and he was having to go and, and, and hang on a cross and take the sins of the world, he didn't want to do that. But, you know, more than he wanted his pleasure or his comfort, he wanted the will of God. And so he says, he prayed this in the garden in Luke twenty two forty two, 42. Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done and not mine. That's where we need to get to the point where we say, God, I'm totally surrendered and yielded to you. I think God would be more in favor in helping us if we're after his agenda, doing his will instead of doing our own. Don't you think? Amen. Would you do me a favor and stand with me this morning as we close?
Let's just take a moment to just pray through this. Would you just close your head? Um, close your head. <laughs> oh, you close your head while I open up mine. <laughs> oh, I think I need a hamburger. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just take a moment right there where you are. Let's see if we can remove some barriers today. If you're here today and you say, man, I, I think, I think I've been soft to myself and sin in my life and I've just been excusing why I have it or, or just call it a little white lie or, and I hadn't really been owning up to it. And I need to, I need to first of all, confess and agree with God that it's wrong behavior. But the next, I need to repent. I need to change my attitude. I need to change my heart. I'm not going to embarrass you today, but if you feel like the Lord's just showing you something in your life that's not in line with Him, would you just right there where you are, just t take responsibility for it. You know, the children of Israel had a grumbling problem. And, and they experienced snakes because they had a, a bad grumbling spirit. So why don't we just take a moment right now to just get our heart right with God and just say, you know what? Come on, I, I want to have an upright heart before the Lord. Just right there where you are, just say, Lord, would you forgive me? I'm sorry, Lord. God, I want this barrier broken. So I can make headway. I can receive breakthrough. Father, I pray right now, Lord, that you would just come and just touch every person in this auditorium that is just responding. That is just asking you to cleanse them, forgive them. Now, come on, just, just make that decision that I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to walk away from that. I'm not going to live in that rut any longer. Or maybe you're here today and been dealing with the barrier of doubt I can tell you I'm guilty man I I'm convicted I am convicted of believing God one day and doubting God the next day staying up at night worried and fearful and and just not trusting him to help me to lead me come on if, if that's you today come on let's ask the Lord to, to just break doubt off of our lives let's ask him to, to just break come on let's ask him Lord would you just help us today Lord we believe help our unbelief today Lord we we trust you we want to rely on you but Lord we confess to you today the Lord sometimes we struggle but Lord today we're making a decision the Lord we're not going to speak doubt we're not going to live doubt we're not going to act doubt but Lord we're going to act in faith we're going to act right now that Lord that you're going to come through you're going to provide for us in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We praise you that, God, you're moving in our, on our behalf. Now, maybe some of you are, in dear, or, or are experiencing spiritual opposition. Well, come on, let's do a little warfare right now. And come on, let's, let's forbid. Come on, let's, let's declare that the, the enemy's plans are not succeeding in our life. Come on, declare that over your life. In the name of Jesus, I declare that over every family here. Lord, we forbid it from operating. We break all opposition, Lord, and all, all control of the enemy. We break its power in the power and the authority of the name of Jesus. I declare that every plan and tactic of the enemy is broken right now. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father God, that you're liberating us and you're setting us free today. Thank you, Father, that, Lord, the powers of darkness is broken off of me, my family, my home, my children, my grandchildren, my church. Thank you, Father, that you're liberating and setting us free today. I'm going to declare it right now. You're free. The blood of Jesus sets you free in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. We declare that the liberation power of God is being released over this house right now. Darkness, I push you back. Oppression, I push you back. Discouragement, I push you back. Oh, depression, discouragement, it has to go. Heaviness, I say go in the name of Jesus. I release the love of God. I release the joy of the Lord. I release the blessing of the Lord. I release the favor of God over my life, my family, my church, my people. In the name of Jesus, I release the favor of God right now. May the blessing and the 
divine favor of God be released today. Lord, may there be breakthrough in the heaven as we bind up the strong man and as we release the power and the authority of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Now let's just take a moment right now and say, Lord, not your will, not my will, rather, but your will be done. Come on, let's yield to him right now. Let's yield to him and say, Lord, not my will, not my agenda, Lord. I want your agenda, even if it doesn't make sense to me, even if I don't understand it. I don't want what I want. I don't want what Todd wants. I want what you want, Lord. I want your will. I want your plan to be established in my life. I don't want to do anything less. I don't want to do anything more. Your will, only your will, just your will. Help me, Jesus, to do that today as we yield to you. We surrender to you. Now listen, if you're here today, you're in church today, and really, in your heart of hearts, you say, Todd, I don't know for sure that I'm a Christian. I don't know that if I died right now that I would go to heaven. I hope to, but I'm not sure because I've never really surrendered my heart to Jesus. I've never really asked them to genuinely forgive my sins, but I want to do that today. If that's you, would you just raise both of your hands and wave them like this at me? Because I want, this is, there you go, there you go. Anybody else like that? Come on, ma'am, would you do me a favor? Slip out of the pew and just come right down. If the Lord is right right here, ma'am, come on down. Those of you that have your hands raised, come on, just take a walk of faith. Come on, just take a step of faith right now. Come on, just come on down. Come on, be bold about it. Be bold. The devil hates this walk, but God is cherishing you on. The angels of God are cheering you on right now. Yes, amen. The angels of God, all heaven is taking note right now, stopping heaven, and they're saying, oh no, oh no, oh no, some more are coming into my family. So just pray this prayer, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross so my sins could be forgiven. Lord, I ask you to forgive me. I'm sorry for everything I've done that's wrong. I repent. I want to change my behavior. And I ask you to give me the power to do that. Thank you, Father, for accepting me into your family. Lord, you are a good Father, and I'm happy to be your child. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now listen, if you just stay right here for just a moment, we want to give you some literature, some Bible if you need one to help you get started. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's rejoice with heaven right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, listen, maybe God is working on your heart. Maybe you feel you're feeling a need for somebody to pray with you, stand with you. There's power in agreement. Amen. So we're going to open up the altars. If you need prayer for anything, we'll be up here and we'll be here till everybody is prayed for. So make sure you make your way up here. But let me just pray uh, just a, a blessing over you. Come on, I pray the face of God, the favor of God, the blessing of the Lord, the grace of God be upon every one of you. I pray open doors of opportunity. Lord, I pray that God, you would just favor them. You would bless them. You would increase them. Lord, that you give them great of wisdom. And I pray, Father, that you would just, Lord, make a roadway for them in their wilderness and you would provide a stream in the desert, God. May they be blessed of the Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.